Welcome to Nozzle. My name is Fiona. And I am Shruti Bobo. You can call me Bobo. And I'm Celestine, and you can call me Celo. This is a place where we have lots of fun while we learn. And I'm feeling so excited today. And why is that, Bobo? Well, I don't know. I think I'm just happy that we have so much going on on today's show. We have the big three. Hot numbers and cool words. As well as our drama study buddies. And my excitement just turned into nervousness. Please, please, let, let's get on with the show. Okay, Bobo, let's head to the chill out zone. Hello, everyone. Hello. Now, let's say a big hello to everyone watching at home. Hello. hello. Now, Bobo, we'd be happy if you could tell us what today's topic is. Well, today's topic is all about emotions. Wow, that sounds exciting. Now, can someone tell us what today's buzzwords are? Confused. Excited. Happy. Extremely. Thank you. I hope you wrote down the buzzwords. Try and listen up for them throughout today's show. Well, now, Fiona, I am worried. Why isn't the show as amazing as I want it to be? Well, don't worry, Bobo. I'm sure it will be amazing. Just wait and see. And here's something that is exciting. It's time to visit our friends. Well, is it time for the study buddies? Of course. I have cleaned until I'm so tired. I can't do anything anymore. Well, I hope you are happy. Of course I'm happy. Diane will get over the whole debate thing, but it was funny. But she is your sister. Don't you even feel a little bad when you see her sad? Ah, she should have a sense of humor like everyone else. I'm going to have a bit of rest before we get back to class. Fine, I'm going to play football. You will jump while sleeping in the classroom if you'll be cleaning. I just cleaned here. I'm tired. Well, clean it again and make sure it is spotless. I want a parent teacher association to find it perfect. Joseph, is that you? Why are you dressed up like the headmaster? Ah, it is the headmaster, Joseph. This is not like when our boys. It is real life. We are all and you clean the school. I am the headmaster, and the parents are coming in late. So get cleaning. I clean the school, get to work. You, what are you doing here? Get out. Get away from my daughter, Patrick. Diane, is that you? What's going on? You look just like mom. Is that your daughter? She's my niece? No one's your family anymore, Patrick. After you ruined the debate for us and never said sorry, we all decided to move on. Get away from Chief Justice Diane Patrick. Go and clean other classes. No. Go and clean other classes. No. This is all a dream. Don't worry. Patrick is very confused today. See? Ah, at least you, you're still the same. I'm excited to see you. Patrick, still at school, I see. Do you like my shirt? I got it when I play for Rwanda in the African Cup of Nations. I'm transferring to Europe next month. Eh? You play football now? Yes, but I'm also learning to be a coach. Are you all right, Patrick? No. You look extremely sick. No. No, no, no. no. No, no. Son, that's someone we knew in primary school. He never knew how to say sorry. Now, he's always confused. Patrick, you are late. Are you okay? Alice, 
Is that you? Yes, it is. I'm glad you came. But you are early. Have you finished at the school early? I don't know what's going on. Why am I a school cleaner? Well, that is not all that you do. You also milk my cows, you clean my house, and I let you live on my farm in the old study shack. What happened to me? Oh, Patrick, don't be so confused. I know it seems strange, but because you are meant to your sister, I never said so. Everyone forgot about you. But I'm right here. Yes, but no, I wanted to be your friend. Even Joseph got tired. If you'd have just said so, you would have helped everybody. Oh, Patrick, don't be sad. It will all be better. But first, you need to milk my cows. The Chief Justice is coming to my house for tea, but she doesn't want to see you. So if you could just stay here, thank you. Be no, Patrick. Patrick, what's happening? Hey, the afternoon class is about to start. You fell asleep. What were you dreaming about? Where's Diane? Mm, outside. She is reading. I need to see her. I don't think she wants to see you. Diane, Diane. What do you want? If you just say sorry, you could help everybody. I've come to say I'm sorry. I did what I did, and it was wrong. I hurt your feelings. I should have been nicer. And brothers should always protect their sisters, and I didn't do that. That's right. You were very mean. Let him pass. Is this for real, or are you just saying sorry because you can? This is real. I promise. I was confused. I didn't think. And I hope you can forgive me. I forgive you. This makes me really happy. What an interesting episode. Did you all enjoy it? Yes! Fantastic. Did you hear any of today's buzzwords? Yes! Brilliant! How did you get on at home? Well, do you know that all the emotions in the study buddies have left me feeling really exhausted and I'm tired. Maybe I should take a nap. I'm afraid you can't do that, Bobo. It's time to take our first trip of the day to the learning zone. Uh, really? I'd be angry if I missed it. Well, I'll stay. <laughs> That's a good idea, Bobo. So let's head to the learning zone to meet teacher Flora for hot numbers. Hello, everyone. Hello, teacher Flora. Welcome to Hot Numbers. Today, we're looking at algebra. What? Alge who? Now, that sounds really confusing. Algebra, Bobo. Don't worry. It's easier than you think. Let me show you. Algebra is used in maths when either there is a number we don't know or a number that varies. For example, who can remember the formula for measuring the area of a circle? Yes, Ezekiel? Pi R squared. Very good. 
Now R is representing the radius of the circle, which varies depending on how big or small the circle is. So you've been using algebraic expressions all along without realizing it. Oh, yes, I have. So I'd like us to practice replacing the letters in an algebraic expression with a number and working out the value. On the board, I have an expression 7y plus 5. Now, when we say 7y, we mean 7 lots of y. When a letter is preceded by a number, we know to multiply the value of the letter by that number. So if y equals 1, what would be the value of the expression? Yes, Kenny? 7 multiplied by 1 makes 7. Add 5 makes 12. So the expression is 7y plus 5, which gives us 12. Now, if the y is 3, what would the expression look like? Yes, Junior? 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. Add 5 is 26. So this is how it looks like. 7y plus 5, which gives us 26. Very good. Now, Bobo, if y equals to 5, how much is the expression worth? Well, uh, Teacher Flora, now that's a really hard one. Uh, wait, um, 7 multiplied by 5 is 35. Then, if you add 5, that gives us 40. I knew you could do it. So this is how the expression would look like. 7 multiplied by y5 plus 5, which gives us 40. I knew you could do it, Bobo. Now, sometimes algebraic expressions can look a bit confusing, like this. 5y plus 8 minus 3y minus 4. Now, if y is 2, what is the value of the expression? Can anyone solve it? No? Okay, let me do it for you. So, we know that the value of y is 2. So we take 5, multiply by 2, which gives us 10. And then 10, we add 8, which gives us 18. Now, from the 18, we subtract 3y. So that means it's 18 minus 3 times 2, which gives us 18 minus 6, which gives us 12. And then from 12, we subtract 4, which is 12 minus 4, which gives us 8. It's a bit complicated. So when this happens, we try and simplify the expression to make it a bit clearer. We rearrange it. How do you think we might do this? Yes, Ezekiel? By putting y's together and putting the numbers together. What a good answer. Yes, first of all, we see whether we can group similar things together, which we call finding like terms. Looking at the sum on the board, how do you think we can solve this? Yes, Kenny. By putting the y's together. 5y minus 3y, and then we put the numbers together. So we know that 5y minus 3y gives us 2y. What do we do next? Yes, Junior. 8 minus 4 is 4. Good. So we now have a simplified expression, which is 2y plus 4. Uh, teacher Flora, is that really the same as the long expression? Why don't we see? If y is 2, what is the value of the expression? Yes, Ezekiel? 2 multiplied by 2 equals to 4, plus 4 equals to 8. Very good. Now, remember when I solved the long expression? We also said y was 2, and our answer was 8. So you can see that in our simplified expression, it gives us the same answer, which is 8. Wow, now that 
was very, very simple, Teacher Flora. I'm glad to hear that. So, today we've learned how we can use a letter to represent a number to create an expression. Then, we practice giving the letter a value so we could calculate the expression. And then, we learned how to simplify expressions by finding like terms. Well done, everyone. Now we're taking a short break, but we'll be right back for some more fun-filled learning. That's right, and do not go anywhere. back to the no zone. Are you feeling better, Bobo? Well, yeah, a bit better. I took a nap during the break, but I don't know why I'm feeling so many emotions today. It, it is very confusing. Well, maybe that's because our topic today is about emotions. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's remind everyone about today's buzzwords. Confused. Excited. Happy. Extremely. Thank you. Well, do you know I think you might be right. I'm feeling much better now that I know I'm emotional because we are talking about emotions and I can handle anything. Bobo, even with all the tension in the math game? Of course I'm ready, but are our guests ready? Let's find out. It's time for... The Big Three! Welcome to the Big Three. Now, in this game, it's all about numbers. Three contestants, three questions, ten seconds. Whoever gets the most right wins these great textbooks. And if the scores are tied at the end, we will move into a tiebreaker question. Now, remember, you only get to hear the question once. And you must write down your answers within ten seconds given or your answer will not count even if it is correct. Are the rules clear? Yes. Make sure you play along at home. Okay, Bobo, is the timer ready? The timer is always ready. Okay, question number one. If 10 books cost 4,500 francs, how much does one book cost? Time starts now. And time is up. Fence down, everyone. Okay, question number two. Take the square root of 64, add 7, and multiply by 2. Time starts now. And time is up. Thanks down, everyone. Okay, final question. Question number three goes like, I made a loss of 2,000 300 francs when I sold my bike for 11,700 francs. What was the buying price? And time starts now. And time is up. Pens down, everyone. Okay, now let's see how everyone did. Isimbi, if you're ready, show us your answer for question number one. And for question number one, Isimbi's answer is... 250. Okay, Winneza, show us your answer for question number one. And Winneza's answer for question number one is... 71. Okay. Next up is Mujisha. Mujisha, show us your answer for question number one. And Mujisha has 450. Okay, question number one was like this. If 10 books cost 4,500 francs, how much does one book cost? This is the working. 10 books cost 4,500. If they are 10, we shall divide 4,500 divided by 10 
and the right answer is 450. Well, and that means that Mujisha got the first sum correct. And now on to a second question. Isimbi, what was your answer for the second question? And for question number two, Isimbi's answer is 71. And Uineza, what is the answer for question number two? And Uineza's answer for question number two is 142. Next up is Mujisha. Mujisha, what is your answer for question number two? And Mujisha has 140. Okay, okay. Now, question number two was like, take the square root of 64, add 7, and multiply by 2. This is the right working. Square root of 64 is 8. 8 plus 7 equals 15. 15 times 2 equals 30. Wow, I'm afraid no one got the right answer now, but let's move on. So if you could reveal to us your answer for question number three. Isimbi, what is your answer? And? Okay. Oh, I think she ran out of time doing that one. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rinez, what is your answer for question number three? Oh. All right. <laughs> she ran out of time as well. Yes, and Hujisha, what was your answer? Oh, it seems everyone <laughs> ran out of time. Okay, question number three was like this. I made a loss of 2,300 francs when I sold my bike for 11,700 francs. What was the buying price? Now, this is the sum. I made a loss of 2,300 francs and I sold my bike at 11,700. So, to get the buying price, we add the loss plus the buying price, and we get 14,000 was the buying price. Wow, and that means that today's big three winner is Mugisha. Yeah. Very well done, Mugisha, and all of you for working so hard and you each get a special prize thanks to our friends at the Longhorn Publishers. And how many did you get right at home? I'm sure you enjoyed playing the big three. Well, that was an exciting game, full of nerve, full of tension. Hello. <laughs> it certainly did. So let's calm down as we head to the learning zone for cool words. Cool words, cool, cool words. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello, teacher, teacher Flora. Flora. I'd like to start today's cool words with some revision. Who can tell me what a verb is? Yes, Mugisha? A verb is a doing word. That's right. A verb describes an action. Now, what is a tense? Yes, Isimbi? A tense describes when an action happened. Very good. In a sentence, the way a verb is formed tells us when the action took place. Who can give me an example of a tense? Yes, Uineza? Past simple. Excellent. We use the past simple to describe an action that has been completed in the past. For example, I waited a long time. Now, notice how the verb to wait is formed in the past simple. Yes, Bobo? Uh, we just added ed to the verb. Normally, yes, but there are some verbs that are irregular. For example, I was happy. Was comes from the verb to be, so you have to be very careful. How about another tense? Past continuous. That's a good one. We use the past continuous to describe an action that took place in the past but was not completed. For example, I was feeling happy. For the past continuous, we use the verb to be in the past tense. So I was or they were followed by a verb for the action they were doing. And we add ing to the action that they were doing. That's exactly right. A verb with an ing on the end is called the present participle. Now, does anyone know another tense that deals with action in the past? Yes, Isimbi? Past perfect tense. Excellent. 
We use the past perfect tense to describe an action that occurred before another action in the past. For example, I had waited a long time before I traveled abroad. So, me traveling abroad occurred in the past and me waiting happened before that. Do you all understand? Yes. 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 Very good. Now, we form the past perfect by using the verb to have in this sentence, had, followed by the past participle of the action we were doing. In this sentence, it's waited, which is the past participle of to wait. Well, I think I have it, Teacher Flora. Excellent. Let's play a game. In front of you, there are papers with one of the three tenses that we've been talking about written down. I'd like you to turn your piece of paper and then come up with an example. Do you think you can do that? Yes. Okay, let's go. Yes, Mugisha? Past simple. I washed the dishes. Very good. Next. Yes, Isimbi? Past perfect. I had finished my homework before I went to bed. Very good. Next. Yes, Uineza? Past simple. I missed the bus. Next, Bobo? Oh, <clears throat> past continuous. I was watching football. Very good. Next, Mugisha? Past perfect. My parents had already eaten when I arrived home. Next, Isimbi? Past simple. I woke up early. Very good. Uideza? Past perfect. I had already prepared my clothes before I went to bed. Very good. And, and Bobo? Past continuous. I was walking to school. Fantastic work, everyone. Now, I want us to look at this sentence. I was feeling excited. This word, excited, who can tell me what type of word it is? Oh, uh, yes, Bobo. Um, well, excite is a verb, but then the action in the sentence is feeling, as in, I felt. So excited is a describing word, and that makes it an adjective. That's very well worked out, Bobo. We use adjectives ending in ed to describe our emotions. Quite often, the adjective is spelled the same way as the past participle of the verb. For example, I worried myself. I looked worried. In our first example, worried is the verb because that was the action I was doing. I was worrying, whereas in the second example, the action I was doing was looking and worried was describing how I looked, so it's the adjective. Something to remember. Well, I was worried that I would be confused, but I wasn't. Thank you very much, Jaflora. You're very welcome, Bobo. Excellent work, everyone. You've all worked very hard. Well done. So, as a reward, why don't you sit back and enjoy another animated tale? That's right. It is story time. Welcome to the African Tales. This is the story of why chickens can't fly. Once, the chicken was the best flying bird in the whole world. He was the envy of the whole bird kingdom, and this was because he had the most beautiful magic feathers that shone when he flew and sparkled like diamonds in the sky. The magic feathers also meant that chicken could fly higher and faster than any other bird in the sky. So chicken would always be seen fly high and doing tricks as he spun around in circles and flew with one wing. He was a marvel. However, Chicken was an extremely arrogant bird. He would always make fun of the other birds for being too slow and always snatch the food out of other birds' nests. You don't mind, said the chicken. All this high flying makes me very hungry. This arrogancy made the other birds annoyed and they wanted ways to stop chicken from being so arrogant. The other birds tried everything to stop, from tying wings to covering them with the grease but nothing worked. 
he was always one step ahead of them. So the birds held a secret meeting at Eagle's Nest to find a way to stop Chicken. Chicken could not come. He was too busy writing his name in the clouds above the mountains. So we must do something, said the hawk. My babies will starve if he keeps snatching our food away from us. Wise Owl sat in the corner and listened to the birds grumble and discuss. Finally, he flapped his wide wings and called for silence. We must take Chicken's precious magic feathers, said the Owl. That way, he will never be able to fly or take our food from us again. So the other birds agreed and they began to hatch a plan to get the magic feathers. Once they left, Sparrow was sent to find Chicken. As always, Sparrow found Chicken sitting on top of a tree, feasting on some food he had snatched from Hawk. What do you want, Sparrow? said Chicken. Have you brought me some food to eat? Well, not today, said Sparrow. But I know where you can get all the food you want. So Chicken sat up, very interested. Speak up, Sparrow, said Chicken. The birds are having a feast, said Sparrow. Right now, at Eagle's Nest, there is all the food you can eat. Chicken was mad. How could the other birds organize a party without telling him? And with that, Chicken flapped his wings and his magic feathers lit up. Suddenly, Chicken was rushing towards the mountains to Eagle's Nest to crush the party. When Chicken got there, the dancing had already begun. He was perfectly happy and began to show off his magic feathers in an excited manner. So the other birds went on with their business and as always, Chicken ate all the food at the party. Chicken ate and ate and ate until all the food was gone. So eventually, Chicken had grown so heavy, even his magic feathers could not carry him away. So Ego offered him a corner in his huge nest so that he could rest. Once Chicken fell asleep, all came into the nest. All right, everyone grab one magic feather, said all. And just like that, Ego grabbed the four feathers. Hawk grabbed the four feathers. All grabbed the two feathers. Hummingbird grabbed the two feathers, and Sparrow grabbed the two feathers. There were only two feathers left by the time all the birds had grabbed them. They went across the world and buried the two remaining feathers deep in the ground. Ego and Hawk carried the sleeping chicken back to the ground at the bottom of the mountain and left him there to sleep. So when chicken woke up, he was hungry. On the top of the tree, he saw Sparrow eating a delicious worm. Chicken wanted the worm, so he flapped his wings and tried to fly, but his normal wings could not pick him off the ground. He was confused. Is something the matter, chicken? Said Sparrow. Oh, my magic feathers, they are gone, said chicken. Yes, the other birds took them, but the two that are left are buried under the ground, where you will never find them, said Sparrow. Chicken tried his hardest to fly up to Sparrow, but he could not. Eventually, Chicken started to dig, searching for his last two magic feathers. You wait, said Chicken. When I find them, all your food will be mine again. And to this day, if you see Chicken poking at the ground, he's still looking for his magic feathers so that he can fly high and write his name once again in the sky. And now, that is the end of the story why Chicken's. So that's why chickens can't fly. Yeah, I guess so. I, I, I never knew that. Did you all enjoy it? Yes! Fantastic. Now, sadly, we've run out of time. Oh, no. Now I'm feeling miserable. Ah, uh, don't worry, Bobo. We'll be back soon. <laughs> thank you for watching. And thank you all so much for helping us today. You've been brilliant. Uh, well, although goodbyes make me sad, I am happy that we'll be back. <laughs> yes. So come on, everyone. Let's say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.